Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello and welcome to Full Spectrum Feeling. I am Blaze Schwaller and I decided to make this podcast to be able to offer this pocket of the internet, the podcast world, for you to come and gather with me and feel your feelings, whatever they are, and to talk about them, to have our ideas and our thoughts and our feelings about what's going on in life, and to be able to talk about them in a real and practical way. And I wanted to make this because so much of my life has been learning that it's okay to have feelings. And I know that that sounds so ridiculously simple. Of course, I'm allowed to have feelings. I'm a human being. But I know I'm not alone in having feelings and deciding that some of them are good and some of them are bad and I only wanted the good ones and I didn't want the bad ones and not doing a great job in my life of finding that balance or even understanding how to feel through things that were difficult and I had been guilty and still am you know of suppressing certain emotions or choosing to bury them in other feelings and other thoughts to try and bypass whatever I think is not so great or that I don't want to think about myself or I don't want to admit. Um, I have feelings about my feelings and then I have feelings about that and that sounds neurotic but it's true. (laughs) I want there to be a space for all of you out there who feel like I do who want to be more fully present in our lives, who want to be, you know, fully human and have this wildness in our hearts and be able to express ourselves fully, but who really want some support in that, who want to be able to touch in with someone who's also going through all of the feelings and all of the ideas. And, you know, I I fumble and I make mistakes and I have lots of thoughts about why that is and how that is. And I'm always working through it. And I thought, you know, why not share what I go through and what's going on in the hopes that it helps someone else. So hopefully by creating this, I'm reaching out to you and hopefully in some small way, I'm able to be a benefit and a blessing in your life. So that's my hope. And if I'm not, I apologize deeply. And I hope that You find something excellent to listen to that is not me. But for right now, listen to me because I'm making this podcast. (laughs) Oh, man. So why did I call it Full Spectrum Feeling? It's because I have found that there is a full range of emotions and that for most of my life, I've been only comfortable with a narrow range or a narrow spectrum of feeling, both in amplitude and also in just the the range of light, I guess, of what I would say those feelings are. So from a young age, I was often sad. I was often guilty or feeling shame, but I didn't want to feel like that. I was comfortable feeling it. I got stuck in that spectrum for a really long time. So then, you know, even my happiness was... A shade of sad or a shade of concerned. I just, I wasn't very comfortable in being myself for a long time. And then there was this point in life where I said, you know, I just don't want to be sad anymore. I'm going to give that up. And what's interesting about that is that I just kind of shut it down. I decided I would turn it off. And I just, like, turning a dial or a dimmer switch down. I was like, I'm just, I I can't cry all the time anymore. I can't be sad all the time. I don't even know why I'm sad. I have no idea what this is about. 
but no matter what it is about, it's not functional. So I'm going to just stop. And, you know, interestingly, I was able to make that happen. Like in an instant, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just not going to cry anymore. And I didn't, but it numbed down everything. Everything got quieter. Years later, I began working with um, self-esteem, confidence, listening to all kinds of self-help tapes at the time, reading self-help books, psychology, reaching out to friends, going to college, right? And exploring all of those feelings and what had gone on that might have contributed to, to my feelings and my thoughts. And I started to become happier, right? I found things that I really enjoyed in life and was able to explore them some more. And then I got really comfortable with the happy, being happy, being pleasant, being good. Those, that little tiny band, right, of happy, content, bored was okay, and that's where I could be comfortable. But I was definitely not okay dipping into sadness. Anger was absolutely off limits. Anger is one I've really struggled with in my life to allow myself to feel and express properly because I just didn't know how. But what I'm trying to say here is that through working with myself, through beginning to understand that there is, of course, a full range of emotions and that, you know, we're not really meant to just get stuck in any one area. And that if you're allowing yourself to feel more fully or feel more variety, that you actually begin to feel overall better. That, um, you know, ironically allowing myself to be angry sometimes and to be sad and depressed and really go there and grieve lets the highs feel fuller. There's just more of a resonance there in my life. Things are more meaningful. I don't feel like there's anything closed off to me. And those deeper, harder feelings are less scary for me and I'm I'm willing to confront them and that's been a huge blessing particularly since having a child you know to to be able to experience my feelings and not fear having them would damage her in some way to be able to talk with her about feeling her feelings fully and give her hopefully a sense of comfort that you know, all of the feelings are for her and she's allowed to feel what she feels. And she's taught me so much because she can move through an emotion in an instance, like things that, you know, if I got sad and was crying on the floor, that upset, I, I'd be there for days and she can just move through that in three minutes and be like, oh, no, I'm fine now. I was a little sad. Real tears came out, mom. And then, you know, she kind of moves through it and then she's on to the next thing and you ask her about it later. She's like, oh yeah, I was sad then, but I'm fine now. And she doesn't hold on to it. And I think that that's something that's probably true for all of humanity, right? We're not meant to get stuck. We're meant to feel and move through things. And some feelings certainly have more depth and impact. Grieving the loss of a person, grieving the loss of a job, grieving in general can take a long time and it comes in different waves and different experiences anger injustice like all of that stuff has its space and it can be used to fuel us and it can be used to fill out our experience of life but we don't know that if we're too afraid to dive into feeling it so full spectrum feeling is about being present with what emotions are coming up noticing where we have that dimmer switch turned way down to protect ourselves or just off completely, noticing where we've decided that we're only going to tune into one or two stations and giving ourselves a kick in the butt to try to move up and down the scale a little bit and just expand that spectrum so that our lives become this symphony of experiences to be able to inform ourselves and get all of that amazing knowledge that our feelings are there to give us. I think that it's this amazing feedback system that we have that, you know, we're born into this body and it gives us so much information, so much feedback, and it's incredible. And, you know, along the way, 
we can gum up some of the works and we can get caught in some patterns that maybe aren't um, perfect for our vehicle, but it's okay. And that's also human. And being able to give ourselves a tune-up now and then and allow ourselves this opportunity to feel a little more, accept where we're at, explore the ideas and the thoughts and the experiences around what we feel and why we feel that way just gives us so much opportunity for self-growth, to propel ourselves forward, to make these leaps um, in creativity and accomplishment that you know we just don't have if we're living on automatic or if we're too bogged down to be able to reach out and find that inspiration. So my hope is to give us a little space to gather now and then, hear some stories, to feel human together, to recognize ourselves in the stories of others, in the experiences of others, and to expand our range of operation, right? To give ourselves permission to dream and to hope and to become this more embodied, more empowered version. And not empowered as in like, I need to empower you, but like you power yourself up, you get more energy, uh, more energized version of yourself. That's a better way to say it. Because I don't think that anyone else empowers you. You empower you. You already have everything you need in your life. And I think when we are in communication with other people, when we connect, that we have this opportunity to express ourselves more fully and be more fully ourselves. And, you know, my whole life has been this unfolding of who, who am I? Who do I want to be? How do I want to show up for other people? And what does that even mean? I can get so lost in questions like that and get caught in crippling self-doubt. For instance, why would I record this <laughs> for, for anyone? But really it's because I want, I want to connect, I want to be heard, I want to be seen and felt by other people. There's this idea of legacy. What do I want to leave behind, not just for my child, but for humanity, for myself, to know that I've made an impact in the world. And what I know, honestly, is that every person is making an impact on the world. And we have this profound influence on everything around us. And we're so often caught in our own thoughts and our own story about what's happening that we actually miss the greater picture of how precious we are and how needed we are in that space and in our time. And I want to impart that to all of you, to be able to say, you know, no matter what you are doing, where you're living, what's going on in your life, how you are living and how you're showing up is precious and it's meaningful to yourself and to the people in your life. And the world needs you just as it needs me. And that's something that I did not feel for a very long time. I felt like, you know, if I disappeared one back in the day, I would think the world would be better off, right? And I would get down on myself or think that I had no impact or there was no purpose in my showing up that other people could do life better than me. And uh, man, it, it almost brings tears to my eyes to talk about it because it feels uh, such a potent memory, right, of this grief of feeling like I didn't belong or I didn't know where I belong. And to an extent, you know, that fuels me this desire to find where do I belong and how can I fit in and how can I contribute and help other people because I all I've ever wanted is to help other people and to have a place that made a difference and oh, all of the stories that I read everything even the stories on TV the stories that we tell everyone is looking for that purpose everyone has that same crippling self-doubt inside. We all have this 
tragic sense of loss and fear that maybe we're not enough or that we need to be more different somehow in order to make a difference in the world. And what I want in my legacy is to let everyone know that it's okay and we're already doing it and there's nothing for us to prove, there's nothing for us to have to change. Everything is okay. And what if we get to just show up and play and be ourselves? And what if it actually can be easy? And those are questions I ask myself a lot because it it is a continual process, friends. Um, I have to ask myself that so many times a day to remind myself that life does not have to be hard. I am a poster child for making things difficult that do not have to be difficult and adding more tasks and more complex layers to everything in order to I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know why. I think it's this perfectionism trap and this thinking that there has to be a perfect outcome. But the honest truth is just by existing, just by being and showing up, it's enough. And it's beautiful. And people need us like that. They need us in our imperfections. They need us with our feelings of worry or sadness or regret because we all feel it and we can relate to that and we so much want to relate to other people who feel the way that we do and I also want to offer hope that there is so much capacity that we have within us to change and change again and again and again and to transform our lives and continually grow my life you know I'm not terribly old I'm 42 this year so you know my 22 year old self was different from who I am now, but I've, I've reinvented myself so many times in those 20 years and the 22 before that, just constantly learning, constantly meeting new people, having new ideas come at me, trying for new things, experiencing my life, my profession, my body become different and testing those limits and then you know, sometimes feeling defeated by those limits and then overcoming it and deciding again and again how I want to show up and what I want to be and what I want to do. And it's actually what I do for a living now. I am a life coach. I help coach people to achieve more emotional freedom, to be able to embody this freedom to feel what we feel and to to triumph, you know, in our personal lives, to be able to you know, find that, I don't want to say balance because balance seems so mm, not enough in someone's life. Like we, we're all reaching for balance or we think that's what we want, but the truth is that life isn't balanced and we're always tipping in one direction or another. So I think it's helping people navigate and find, find their balance as they navigate those tips and turns and they lean in to different experiences and achieve whatever it is that they're going for, even if it's just learning how to be kind to themselves, to be kind to their heart, to allow themselves to to dream bigger, to ask for more from their lives, to ask more from themselves, and to get comfortable with that, and to get comfortable with the feelings that accompany it, because growing feels scary sometimes, and we want that support, and, you know, in order to do anything, we fail again and again and again. So to be able to have someone go alongside you through that process and help you see where missing the mark is actually helping you hit the mark and take those stumbling blocks and really um, use them to build up that success just the same way that other people have done for me and that I've done for myself too. Like trial and error, right? We just keep stumbling through life and doing what we have to do. Ah, so legacies, what is it that you want to leave the world feeling? Is there a particular feeling that you want others to have when they're around you or they think of you? And is it about you or is it just about what you want them to feel? Isn't that an interesting question? If I'm asking myself that right now, I want people to feel courageous. I want them to feel courageous for themselves, that they have what it takes 
to do anything they want in life and to feel the sense of support that everything is happening in the right time and that even the most difficult things you can handle and you are handling it and that there's always support out there for you and that I can be that support, your family or friends, like there's always something out there that can be that strength when maybe you're not feeling it yet or that can be that launching pad to the next place that you're going but that you know the world is always turning and moving and evolving and that you're not separate from it i want people to take that from this as well that um, you are a part of your place and time you're important and you matter and no matter what you're feeling about that if that makes you feel tears and moved in your heart that that's beautiful if it makes you feel energized and joyful and determined that's so beautiful and all of those feelings are perfect and you're allowed to have all of them ah thank you so much for joining me in this first podcast i know that we're just gonna have even more fun as we get going and we get to explore more of these different feelings, more of these different thoughts, and I can share more of my life with you and hopefully you'll get to share more of your life with me. And I would love if you gave me a shout out in the comments, gave me a review, um, shared this with your friends. I really would love to see this ripple out and affect a lot of people and give a lot of people an outlet to just have some calm, have a little soul hug when they're listening, and have a place where you can feel heard and understood and that I feel so happy that I get to share my life and feel heard and understood by you. All right, I'll see you next time and thanks again. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love and I'll see you next time.